and so lavish funerals until burying a great deal of wealth, and prolonged mourning entails prohibiting people from pursuing their vocations for an extended period of time. Among many things which Mo Zi is known for pioneering, his development of ethics distinct from the more prevailing schools at the time, and his application of justice to law and public policy to cure the ills of his time in ending centuries of conflict is arguably the most well-known aspect of Mo Zi's philosophy. In today's discussion of Mo Zi's ethics and jurisprudence, we will be analyzing his position on how the state's primary goal of promoting happiness for the greater number of people influences law and public policy in assessing his critiques of the misguided social order of other competing schools of philosophy. There are 10 themes that can be extracted from the book of Mo Zi. 1. Promoting the unworthy. 2. Identifying the upward. 3. Clues of care. 4. Condemning aggression. 5. Moderation in use. 6. Moderation in burial. 7. Heaven's intent. 8. Understanding ghost. 9. Condemning music. And 10. Condemning fatalism. Mozart's primary condemnation of music stems from the harmfulness of music due to its negative functions, one of which is its uselessness in promoting the material conditions of everyone. In the surviving fragment of his article, Condemnation of Music, he argued that music, insofar as promoting happiness of the greater good, does little to none as it provides no welfare for the population in contrast to the boats, carts, and other materials which may help men to rest their feet and the workers to relax their shoulders. Since music neither offers material benefits nor reduces the three great worries of the common people relating to food, clothing, and shelter, in other words, improving the material conditions of society, he perceived music as a moral good. He proclaimed that, Let us try sounding the huge bells, striking the rolling drums, strumming the zithers, blowing the pipes, and waving the shields and axes in the martial dance. Does this do anything to provide food and clothing for the people? I hardly think so. He further stated that music can do nothing to rescue the world from chaos and restore it to order. In circumstances where the great states attack the small ones, the great families molest the small ones, the strong oppress the weak, the many tyrannize the few, the cunning deceive them stupid, the eminent lord over the humble, and the bandits and thieves rise up on all sides and cannot be oppressed. In other words, when the class contradictions in society become far too prevalent that the masses rise up against the ruling elites, they cannot be resolved simply by singing away. Mo Zi further propounded that not only is music the means which cannot propose any resolutions to the ills of society, it is often used as a tool by the ruling elites to oppress the masses. It becomes evil when it not only deprives the people of wealth, needed for their food and clothing, but is being used by the rulers and the ministers who, in pursuit of leisure and war, levy heavy taxes upon the common people to produce musical instruments such as bells, drums, zithers, and pipes. He explains this as follows. If those above are unable to attend to their affairs, then the government will be in chaos. If those below are unable to pursue their various tasks, then food and clothing will be in short supply. This will lead unruly and depraved people who lack proper clothing and sufficient food to build up resentment and indignation in their hearts and express it in wanton violence that cannot be stopped. To seek to bring good order to one state by increasing the number of thieves and robbers and decreasing the number of decent and good people is like asking someone who is standing in front of you to turn around three times without exposing his back to you. Therefore, music, though a radical proposal, for being harmful to the extent that it must be prohibited. Mo Zi not only saw music as a non-good, but he also suggested that performing music is also wrong since it is the waste of labor and material resources, two things that are most vital to promoting the welfare of all lives. He viewed performance of music as a waste of human resources since it must have young people in their prime whose eyes and ears are keen and whose arms are so strong that they make the sounds harmonious and seem to strike the bells front and back. Instead of young men spending their time on plowing and planting, and young women on weaving and spinning, their efforts to produce food and clothing will be interfered by employing music. Likewise, those young men and women who are engaging in other arts like dance, theater, must wear sophisticated, embroidered silk in order to make their acts more refined and eat the finest food and drink in order to keep their faces pleasant. Though they produce any sort of material substances, they live like parasites living off of the hard labor, according to Mozart. Mozart went on to further note not only the destructive effect of arts in times of need, 
like during the Warring States period. But its detriment can also lead to such periods because of its nature of enticing people away from improving the material welfare of society. He noted that the extent to which such practices interfere with the work of the people and dissipate their wealth is beyond calculation, but this is the degree to which people are willing to pursue useless endeavors. Music, like other forms of art, often involved in rituals and in lavish lifestyles, appeals to sense perception of the ruling class. However, since humans are social creatures, we take no pleasure in gaining delight from participating in festivals alone, even if we are fond of arts and musical performance. So, not only will the ruling class who spend their time listening to music will deplete their time and attention to look after government administration and exhausting their strength and wisdom in directing affairs within the state, those who could be toiling in labor to benefit the well-being of all will also instead spending their time partaking in social affairs, producing nothing of sorts. He penned, if the people starve themselves in this manner, then they will be unable to withstand the cold of winter or the heat of summer and countless numbers of them will grow ill and die. This greatly diminishes the chances for men and women to procreate. To seek to increase the population in this way is like seeking to increase people's longevity by getting them to fall upon their swords. Mo Tzu perceived this as extremely dangerous since most people will not only get to participate in promoting the happiness of others and utilizing the best of their abilities, but will also likely not get to take part in such activities leading to disorder and decay as well as to nepotism and suffering. Therefore, he reasoned that listening to music and other performance arts may most likely lead to the abuse of governing power and the bungling of social production. Therefore, the laws that a society ordains must always take into consideration the promotion of the material welfare of the society before they do with the immaterial welfare. As such, regulations that pass must necessarily be for moderation and expenditure in the production of luxury goods, the performance of music, as well as the funeral rituals must be curtailed in so far as it does no harm to the people's material well-being. If the amount of resources, both material and in terms of labor, expanded on burials, mourning, musical performances, ritual dances, and luxurious objects for personal and ritual use is sufficient to produce starvation, malnutrition, epidemics, and general social chaos, then it is the role of society to prevent the squander of these resources that are being foolishly misdirected. In other words, the primary role of the state is not just to guarantee the safety of its citizens, but also to make sure everyone has a sufficient living standard. Hua Lin Lai, a professor at the University of California Davis explains that Mo Tzu and his followers were not against everyday ritual, simple music or good, clean, fun per se. Farmers singing songs during planting season, getting drunk celebrating a good harvest, or people just enjoying good sex while trying to procreate and increase the population. None of these activities Mo Tzu will condemn. There is no good reason to outlaw them unless and until they overextend themselves. Barton Watson, in his book Mo Tzu Against Music in Basic Writings further explained to us that Mo Tzu condemned music not only because of the sound of huge bells and rolling drums, the zithers and pipes is not delightful, not because the sight of the carvings and ornaments is not beautiful, not because the taste of the fried and broiled meat is not delicious, and not because lofty towers, broad pavilions, secluded halls are not comfortable to live in. But though the body finds comfort, the mouth gratification, the eyes pleasure, and the ears delight, yet if we examine the matter, we will find that such things are not in accord with the ways of the sage kings, and if we consider the welfare of the world, we will find that they bring no benefit to the common people. Therefore, although the state must be conscious of the aesthetic pleasure contained in the delightful sound, beautiful dress, delicious food, and comfortable dwelling that, that its individual citizens love, when the time comes to make decisions on behalf of its population, it must suspend the aesthetic pursuit of the beautiful, delightful, and comfortable all together for the sake of fulfilling the material needs of everyone. His approach in legislation and statecraft is similar to that of modern Western dialectical materialism in that he emphasized the importance of real-world material conditions and noticing how the contradictions that existed in interactions of his days that is between the feudal warlords and the peasant masses, lead to suffering and tragedies. Hence, even though he did not call to abolish private property altogether, getting rid of social classes like his other contemporary philosophers from the school of agriculture, his work nonetheless still stresses the development of material conditions to alleviate the suffering. 
as a result of his analysis of the material conditions, he also came to the conclusion that material conditions influence all the other aspects of life, such as art, music, religion, and any other higher needs. So he states, Only when you have enough to eat, then you seek after delicious food. Only when you have enough to keep yourself warm, then you seek after beautiful dresses. Only when you have a safe shelter to live under, then you seek after an enjoyable dwelling.